Apostle Paul said he was called to preach the gospel, and he, he's, he's telling the, the folk there at Rome. Now, when we also look, and, and the scripture that we're using today uh, and looking at is the Great Commission that Jesus gave his disciples in Matthew 28. While we're going to use this as uh, uh, taking a look at preaching the gospel and, and being trusted with the gospel, we're going to also take a look at how the Apostle Paul applied that in the church at Thessalonica. So here is the Great Commission. And um, now there's some interesting statements made here, and we're going to begin here in Matthew 28 and verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I am surely, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, there's a lot of elements in here that we want to take a look at. So he gives the disciples this commission. In this, Jesus entrusted to the disciples the gospel. Now, I want to venture to say a little bit here that there's a difference between being entrusted with something and trusted. Because when we look at the difference, the directive here, he can entrust us with something, but does that mean that we can be trusted to do that and to follow through in what he has given us to do in the way in which he has given us to do this? So some of the parts of the directive here that we need to understand in terms of being trusted with the gospel is that we are to teach all nations. There is a teaching process in, in the gospel. And it is all nations. So this is a, a broader concept than just teaching Israelites, just teaching the Jewish nation, uh, just teaching a, a select group of people, but rather to teach all nations. Then also in this process of trusting with, with the gospel, it is baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We find the triune God here. Uh, the involvement of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but baptism is a public profession of your conviction and your willingness to serve God. So in terms of trusting uh, the gospel being trusted to us, there has to be this baptism. And when we understand, even as Paul writes about a baptism, it's, it's the burial of the old self and the resurrection or the raising up of a new man. Important in terms of trusting the gospel as well. Then he tells them here in this commission, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Now, Jesus has commandments that he gave his disciples. Obviously, the one that we probably know most of all is that if you are my disciples, you know, I, I, in essence, I command you to love one another. And by this shall all men know that you are, you are my disciples. But to observe all things I have commanded you. Jesus not only made commandments, but he had things that he told the disciples, uh, sayings they talked about in the sermon that he gave on the, on the mount for us. 
And then he says, and this helps us in terms of trusting in the gospel, I'm with you even to the end of the age. So this goes beyond just the immediate disciples or the apostles. It it comes into our time, our age, and our responsibility as well to the end of of the earth or the end of the age. So again, the question is, can you be trusted with this gospel? And I have mentioned that God entrusted it. I wanted to give us some examples because um, the difference between trust and entrusted. God entrusted the creation to Adam and Eve. He gave them directives. He says, you know, you are to dress it. You are to keep it. Uh, He entrusted them to one another and the like. Uh, With that, though, we, we see that he entrusted them but they ended up not being trustworthy. They did not keep uh, what God had told them to keep. In fact, what the devil did is he, the devil worked to get them to trust him because he, he starts out with this um, questioning, you know, well, God said this, and there's a lack of, of trust then that is developed in Adam and Eve, and they're not trusting God. So we see that. So mankind has fallen short in what God has entrusted to us. And God the the Father can and does fully trust Jesus and with what he has entrusted him with. Now, there's a difference between Jesus and you and I. The Father has entrusted him and Jesus is totally trustworthy in all of these things. Now, I also want to uh, mention that how we respond and how we feel when we know that we are trusted. And I want to eventually come to recognize that Jesus, us to recognize that Jesus does trust us, which changes how we approach the gospel. Now, Paul was entrusted to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, and he did that. And God could trust him to do it. We, we recognize uh, how difficult it was, but you certainly can trust him because he was stoned, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he gave his life. And even the example of God with Abraham, the willingness to sacrifice his son, God in essence says, I know now that you will do these things that I have given to you. So Paul When entrusted to preach the gospel of the Gentile, Paul was opposed by religious leaders. So we want to take a look at some of the problems and difficulties that he had because when it's entrusted to you and I, they're by religious leaders who did not trust Jesus. He also found people unwilling to share the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now that may seem like a small thing, but I believe is a is a huge thing in so many ways for us to understand because he says, go and teach them all things I've commanded you, teach all nations these things. And then also in in sharing the gospel, their unwillingness to share the true Messiah with sinners. Um, So these are challenges in trusting us with the gospel. Are we willing to share the gospel with sinners? Uh, Are we willing to share in the way God wants us to? And then the unwillingness in sharing the gospel, the unwillingness to lift heavy burdens. Now, Jesus, of course, talked to the scribes and Pharisees and talked about all the traditions. And he said, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. You know, you put all of these burdens on people. You're you're unwilling to to take a finger to lift off any of the, the burdens. This is important when we think about trusting us with the gospel. Are we willing to help people? One of the things that that from my perspective, and I'm not saying it's correct, that that I kind of saw that when I was working towards my master's degree in psychology and then my licensing in marriage and family therapy, it is like people who had gone before and gotten their license they wanted to make sure that those that followed them had it as difficult as they did. 
and even more. And it didn't seem like to me that they, they were as, as helpful in some ways as you, as you would like for people to be. We as Christians can feel the same way that uh, entrusting us with the gospel, well, I had it tough and I want them to have it equally as tough. Uh, they're not getting out of this unscathed. But that's just, just a thought here. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend their local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.